it will destroy my life because it will you know after marriage I will be influenced by the uh, woman who is an, a non-Christian woman and she would you know try to affect me influence me not to love God so much not to be so devoted to the church to the to God so it will affect my Christian life and also you know that in the tr in the family then there will be fights because the fights between uh, Satan and God that because she you know is controlled by Satan even though she might not be fighting and yelling all the time but she, her value system is based on the world so we want to change this value system that even though she is attractive I don't want to marry her I don't want to to continue to like her I want to now I can be a friend to her but I want to stop the relationship of dating and or liking her or have the desire to date her so I want to stop all this so this is this is way to handle a whole life because sin is not just one action it's a whole value system the whole way of thinking that uh, affect us so we want to examine our whole life what do I treasure what is the priority in my life the priority should be God first and then family and uh, church and people and uh, ministry so it should be in that uh, priority that it should not be money su success and power and uh, people always respect me you know it this should not be like this but some people in the heart in the bottom of the heart they just want things for them for themselves let me let me just tell you uh, a, a person once told me that that her brothers when they talk about dating this is what they talk about but they're, they're Christians already when they talk about dating they talk about oh we want a beautiful woman with I hope you don't mind me say this with big breasts now because they think that's uh, sexy so they when they talk to each other they talk about beautiful women with brick a uh, big breasts that the value system is there when they have this value system it will affect the choice of women they they will pay attention to sexy women so that value system affect the whole life now for some people they want to be you know be um, making a lot of money they want to be famous then their priority is set onto those things and when they the mind is set on money then the action will always be on money they always think about how much I can earn more and uh, how they can have sus success so then they are being controlled by this value system so I hope we all have this value system from God saying that God is full of love God is kind and loving God is the best that can happen to me loving people is the best I can that I can do for, uh, for myself now loving people doesn't mean I have you know I, I desire the woman but means that I want to bless them with Jesus blessings I want to bless different people I want to be kind to people so this is how we change our, sec our sinful way to first to build up the correct biblical value system God is most important when I love God and obey God that is the best that can happen to me and I want to bless my family and bless other people and bless the church and and serve God and these are the priorities money God will provide for me God will open the way for me God will open the way for me to go higher and higher so when we believe that then we'll then we pursue things to obey God pursue things to love God and then God will be pleased with us and then God will bless our whole life so I hope that when you listen to me that you will set this priority I want to please God I want to be you know when I please God then God is pleased with me then my life God will continue to bless and raise my life to a high level 
So I hope that we have this priority. Yes, Lord, the Lord is my best. It's the best that can happen to me, and He will bless my whole life. I tell you, after I became a Christian, I always want to help more people to believe in Jesus. I, you know, I and I dedicate myself to serve God, and then God provide for me to to be able to study for the ministry, and also that He gave me different teachings that that I have these teachings today. I thank God for all these teachings. I thank God for all those teachings. I thank God for all these blessings, and I thank God for that, and and that builds up my life. And so I thank God for that. That when we love God, that God builds up our life, and God will give the best to us. And I thank God for what I have now and everything I have now. I thank God. I thank God for my health. I thank God for for uh, the uh, my wonderful wife and my wisdom in God. The presence of the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, uh, the the wisdom of doing ministry, and my acceptance, the acceptance of me by different groups, and I thank God for all these things. I want to keep all these things, and I don't want any kind of sin to affect that. So I hope we all will understand this, and then we change our value system so that our life will go higher and higher, so that we will not ruin our life. Okay, now these are more thoughts. That these are sinful thoughts. After I sin, I would just ask God to forgive me. After that, I can sin again. Now this is a very terrible thought because He thinks that I just ask God to forgive, forgive me, and then the problem is taken care of, and then I can sin again. Now I have uh, known. Now I hand I I did not handle this personally because it's uh, it's it's the. Uh, a person asking me to help because her uh, her niece uh, was dating a a man in a church. Now both of them are Christians, supposed to be Christians, but the man has you know has a few girlfriends and he has sex with every one of them, and he wants to have sex with this uh, girlfriend now. And when I heard this, I said, "This is terrible." And I, I suggest to them because, you know, that this person, this man, is just a, a member of another church, and uh, he's not under me. So I said to the woman, "Why don't you tell the pastor, and then let the pastor handle it?" And she said, "The man said, you know, said to her, and he said, I already asked God to forgive me, so the problem is taken care of.'" Now this is a very wrong belief. When we sincerely repent of our sin, sincerely, then God forgive us. But that doesn't take care of the sin. He has committed adultery. He has sex, fornication with these few women. He has to ask these few women to forgive him. He has to, you know. Uh, Try to bring any kind of uh, healing to the women, so that these women are not will not continue to be hurt. And also, you know, it's not just asking God to forgive. He has to change his lifestyle, change his thought that he can have sex with the girlfriend. But he thinks that just asking God to forgive him, he, the sin is already over. It's already over. No more. Now God forgives him, but he need to stop the sin. So it's not just asking for forgiveness; the sins need to be stopped. But he didn't realize that. He he just say, "I already asked God to forgive me, so it's now it's a new start." But a new start means he should not have sex with this girlfriend now. That the relationship should be open to the pastor, so the pastor can counsel them. But he doesn't think that way. He thinks that asking God to forgive is will cure everything. But actually, according to the Bible, it's not just that. Okay. So, oh, the godly thought. Even when God forgives us, sin brings destruction. When I sin willfully, I'm not really repentant. So, if a person continues sin, he's not really repentant. We need to. Continue to ask God to forgive us and overcome the sin. 
any kind of sin that comes in your life. We need to ask God to forgive us and continue to overcome the sin. Do not let the sin continue to affect us. So it's not just forgiveness. We need to change our lifestyle in order to be blessed by God. Okay, and then sinful thought. Nobody sees my sinful thought. People think I'm a holy Christian. They don't see my sinful thought. So it's okay. Now, there are many people who live like that. And then the godly thought. God sees my sinful thoughts. He knows what kind of Christian I am. So God knows that. So I need to repent and change my sinful thought so that my thought is always godly and always loving God and blessing people. I hope you all have thoughts like this. That your thoughts is always saying, God is so beautiful. God is so wonderful. I want to follow God all the time. I want to thank God. I want to live in God. I want to enjoy God. God is wonderful. God is super, you know, super, super good. And I want to obey Him and serve Him and tell people about God. So we want to change. We want to change our thought that God is so wonderful. I want to obey Him totally. And any kind of sinful thought I want to take care of and I want to turn away from those sinful thoughts. Okay, sin, uh, this is sinful thought again. Many Christians sin and nothing had happened to them, so it is okay to sin. So they think, well, they sin and they still have a lot of money, so it's okay to sin. But it's not because God sees us. Now, some people still have money, but they, it doesn't mean God is blessing them. Blessing is not just money. Blessing is that God is pleased with them and bless them with joy and peace and love and kindness and God remembers all the good things they've done and will reward them forever. Now, Godly thought. God will surely reward good Christians. Nobody can escape God's eye. So, so nobody can escape God's eye even when they, nobody sees their inner life but God sees their inner life. So I hope we'll ask God to cleanse our inner life when you think about your inner life, do you, you know, do you have different kind of hidden sins, different kind of negative thoughts, negative thoughts toward God and toward people? Now, if we have negative thoughts like, oh, God doesn't help me, God doesn't love me, that is a sinful thought. God has helped us, but we didn't pay attention to it. That way, it will affect our spiritual life. Now, also when we overcome our sins, to it's good to encourage us. If we improve by 1% a day, we can improve much in 100 days. Keep encouraging ourselves. Whatever we do in God, we can encourage ourselves. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good reports. If there is any virtue and if there is any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So anything good, we meditate on these things. So if we improve by 1%, now today I start to overcome my sins. Today I start to change my, my value system so that I know that it's best to obey God, best to love God, best to bless people, best to love my family, love the church, and uh, to give offering faithfully. It's best to do all these things. I understand this, and I start to change. Then we thank God. Now, even though we still have weaknesses, but we say, Lord, please help me to overcome my weaknesses. We don't want to you know, stay in the weaknesses. But sometimes a person cannot take care of all his sins. But at least he start to change. He start to fix his problem with his spouse. Start to fix the problem with the spouse, even though it's not totally fixed. But he's starting to fix it. Then he, he can say to himself, I'm working on it. I thank God I'm working on it. And we improve a little bit today. I thank God for that. That way we can be joyful. We don't have to wait until we finish changing before we can be joyful. We can be joyful every day, even when I'm, we were changing, even when we still have weaknesses and sins, but we immediately want to repent and ask God to forgive us. And we, whenever we overcome a sin, that we start to overcome sins and 
and pursue holiness, then we say, thank God, thank God, thank God that you are helping me to change. It's God's work. It's wonderful that I'm changing now. It's wonderful that my life is changing now. I thank God for that. I, I love God for that. And I, and I can be happy. Now, this is very important. I have, thank God, I, God has given me this um, interactive prayer and interactive action. What does that mean? Interactive prayer is based on the, the, the promises in the Bible. Whenever I pray to God, God will listen to me. God already knows my needs and God will respond to me when I really sincerely trust in God and pray to Him and He will bless me. He will be happy. So whenever I pray, I can say, I thank God, Lord, I thank you, I thank you. And I know that you are happy that I pray to you. And I can be joyful because you are happy with me. Whenever I'm doing anything right, you are happy with me. So I can be thankful. Now this is not pride. This is believing in the promises of God. That God tell us, you know, anything we do right, even a cup of cold water that we give to a little one, that will by no means lose the reward. So therefore, when I... Uh, uh, when I give a cup of cold water, I can say, thank God, I have the chance to do that. Now, we're not proud. We don't say, I'm proud. We're not proud. But we just say, I thank God I have this opportunity to do it. It's because God changes my life, therefore I do that. And I thank God for that, that I have the opportunity to bless this person, to have an impact on his life. I thank God for that. And I can be happy because God is happy with me. That way, Whenever we pray, we can be happy. Whenever we obey God, we can be happy. Whenever we trust in God, we can be happy. Whenever we overcome sins, we can be happy. So anything we do right, we can be happy. Thank God, thank God. I start to overcome my depression. Now, if someone is depressed, sometimes it's not easy to change it right away. But he starts to change. He starts to change. Then he, he can say, well, thank God, thank God. I, I start to change. I start to uh, to count the blessings of God, I start to have more joy and I'm improving now and I can be joyful. This way we can be joyful all day long. It's God's heart that we can rejoice in the Lord, that we have the relationship with God that I can rejoice and God's presence come to me. I can rejoice because I can sense His presence by His, I can sense His peace and love and joy and power and the swaying of the body. The Bible tells us that, that people can fall down. John and Saul fell down when they saw Jesus. And so the power of the Holy Spirit can come to us and we can feel the power that, that caused people to fall down or to sway. So when we pray, we feel the swaying power. We thank God, God is blessing me. And then I can be happy. So I can be happy because God loves me. I can be happy because when I come to Him, He always comes to bless me. I, and I can be happy because I experience His peace and joy and love. I can be happy because I'm changing my life. I'm doing anything right. God is happy with me. So anything I do right, I can be thankful. That way, we'll be joyful all day long. When we're joyful, we are more strength. Now, some people think they have to have a stern face to be a good Christian. No. The Bible teaches us to be joyful in the Lord. We're thankful that I'm changing today. We're thankful that I'm improving today. We're thankful that God is changing my life and I'm responding to God. And I, when I'm thankful and changing my life, God is happy with me and I can be happy. Ha, ha, ha. I'm changing today. Ha, ha, ha. I'm improving today. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That way, we have more strength to overcome sin. So whenever we start to overcome sins, we'll say, Lord, thank you. I'm starting to overcome my sins now. I thank you, Lord. I'm improving now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I hope this message will help you that you can apply to yourself and apply to your church members, to, to the people around you, to guide them to understand the destructiveness of sin and how blessed it is when we uh, change our life and then God is happy with us and also uh, how to overcome our sins is to whenever we notice our sinful thoughts as five step to victory sinful thoughts immediately we say it's destructive and what does the bible say and pray to for forgiveness and strength and then i choose to obey i choose to start to change i choose to start to change my life so i hope that we 
you know, meditate on our sins. Think about our sins and repent and change the way we think, change the way we the values, how we, what we value, our value system. We want to change so that our whole life will go higher and higher. Okay, let's have a prayer and you can stand up and relax. And you can sense the presence of God when you stand up and you might feel the swing of the body or you might feel peace. We open a heart to God. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Please help us now to repent of our sins. To think about our sins. To think about how we have offended you. How we have offended other people. Please forgive our sins. Help us to, to hate our sins. To understand that sins are destructive. Help us to turn away from sins. Knowing that sins will destroy our life and give the devil a foothold. Lord, we thank you. We thank you because you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Whenever we repent, the whole heaven will rejoice with us so we can be joyful. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is so good. God is happy with us whenever we come to you. You're happy with us whenever we, we trust in you and we praise you and love you. When we, whenever we change for you, you're happy and you bless us. And we can be happy too. Lord, help us to choose to obey you. Choose to obey you. Choose to change our way of thinking. If we treasure money, we treasure reputation and, and fame and success, Lord, please help us to see that these things will just pass away. The most important thing is that we see that God is the most important. Loving God is the most important. God is almighty. God is loving. God is kind. God has all kinds of blessings for us. So we don't want to lose these blessings. We want to trust in God. We want to love God and obey God. And then God will bless us. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Help us to rejoice in you, to count your blessings and rejoice in you. Lord, we don't want to lose our blessings. We want to stay in you, to be blessed by you all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be with us. Give us strength. Give us, give us your presence, Lord Jesus. Change our life with your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We enjoy you. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I love you. I bow down before you. Love you and worship you. Lord our King, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Jesus, I love you. I bow down before you. Love, praise you and worship you. Lord, our, our King, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your way is the best way. When we live in your love, when we trust you and obey you, that is the best for our life. When we love you and obey you, you bless our whole life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We adore you. We want to take care of all the sins in our life. We want to 
obey you all the way. Lord Jesus, we want to serve you all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we worship you, you are happy with us. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Lord Jesus.